All right. <clears throat> Here we are again with the book of Colossians, verse by verse. Uh, I personally love to do studies of the Word of God verse by verse because every verse of the letters of Paul written to us, the body of Christ, are very, very important. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit of God kind of uh, implant this word in the inner man. Book of Colossians, King James Version, which is actually the only Bible this guy wrote version, but it's not a version for me. The King James 1611, 1769 is the only Bible to read and study when, if you really want to understand the will of God in this dispensation of grace. All right, let's start. Chapter 1, verse 1. Who is writing? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, a brother. So Paul is with Timotheus. He wrote two letters to Timotheus, as we know, first and second. And in the second, there is one verse which is a key to understand the Bible. It says in verse 15 of chapter 2, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because this book that we study is the word of truth, but needs to be rightly divided because we cannot obey all that is written, because not all that is written is written to us, the body of Christ, the new creature. The Lord is so gracious, <clears throat> He gave 13 inspired letters from Romans on the way to Philemon, specifically addressing the doctrine for us and to us, the body of Christ, the new creature. Okay. <clears throat> Paul, he calls himself an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And we know that he met the Lord in Acts 9. And from Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor of the little flock, the Lord made him Paul, the apostle, preacher and teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Is writing to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are close. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the word saints means those who are set apart. So if you are a believer in the glorious gospel of the cross, you are saved, you are sealed, you are a saint. Faithful means you go faith. Brethren, because we are brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, the new creature. We are members in particular of the new creature, the body of Christ. Christ is the head. We are brothers and sisters. None of us is in a position of dominance on others. That's really wrong. We are helpers of your joy, not dominators of your faith, because by faith you stand. Every believer, because we all get saved the same way, by grace, through faith, thanks to the operation of God, thanks to the gospel of the cross. Okay. So he gives thanks, in verse 3, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. To give thanks in this dispensation of grace, it's absolutely wonderful because why should we give thanks? Well, you were lost on your way to the lake of fire. Now you're saved and you are directed to heavenly places to be with Christ for eternity in a new glorified body together with the rest of the body. That's so glorious, really from death to life and eternal life. We, thanks, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here, personally, I see the Godhead because we give thanks to God, that will be the Holy Spirit, the Holy God, Holy Ghost. And the Father, that will be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This will be the Word incarnated, now glorified at the right hand of the Father. In 
First John 5 verse 7 is written in the King James Bible. For there are three, three, the bear record in heaven. The Father, capital F, the Word, capital W, seven times. Then the Holy Ghost, HG, capital. And these three are one. So our God is a Godhead. And the term Godhead is found, guess how many times in the King James Bible? Three times. <laughs> The perfection of these uh, pure, pure words of God is such that when you start to study, you understand that you really have to be uh, you know, thankful. Because without this, we wouldn't know anything. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard, what? Of your faith in Christ Jesus. Faith. And of the love which you have to all the saints. This will be the charity, the love of God. For the hope. Remember, 1 Corinthians 13 says faith, hope, and charity. The greatest is charity, the love of God. It will be forever, you know. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. What is this hope? It's the blessed hope. We're looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to the body of Christ, so to say, in the person of Paul once already in Acts 9. You can go and read it. In fact, in Acts 9, 15, it says they made a Paul a chosen vessel unto him. So, for, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, he said Jesus, to bear my name to the Gentiles, and kings and children of Israel. And there's the blessed hope in a world where there is no hope really. Can't put hope in politicians, sadly. You can't put hope in the financial world. It's always in turmoil. You can't put hope in anything really. But in Christ, yes, is the blessed hope. Now, this doesn't mean that you renounce living or working. You live in this life in the flesh, but you walk according to the Spirit, after the Spirit and after the flesh, because that's now your life in Christ. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Heaven. There are three heavens. Heavenly places. That's where we're going. Whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. So Paul already preached concerning this glorious hope in fact you know that's why he got 13 letters and uh, the word of truth is the gospel of our salvation that's what you read in first corinthians 15 1 to 4. it is very rare to go in an assembly that calls themselves christian and to hear the declaration, the proclamation of the glorious gospel of the cross as the only way for us to be saved. Most of the time you hear John 3.16, which is wonderful, it's scripture, it's pure words of God, but it's not written to you. It's not written to us as a member of the body of Christ. But Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, was talking to the nation of Israel. In Matthew 15, verse 24, Jesus said, have been sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we are not the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The majority of us Gentiles, and also those Jews who believe this gospel, they are not the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We become members, as I said, and I repeat, in particular, of the new creature, which is the body of Christ, which is the church. No church in terms of religious association with buildings and, you know, towers and bells is a body of believers. Christ is the head. He's got the preeminence in everything, praise God. We're members. We're brothers. We're members one of another and members of the body, flesh of his flesh, bones of his bones. It's quite impressive. Wow, you know. For the hope which is laid out for you in heaven, Whereof you heard before in the word of the truth. The word of truth, this expression, word of truth, is found five times in the King James Bible. It's also called the word of life. 
is also called the word of faith. But I mean in the sense of some, you know, some groups use, uh, they call themselves word of faith. That's not absolutely Pauline. Word of truth is very important because God preserved his truth. He promised he would in Psalm 12. You can go and read it in the King James Bible. And we're so blessed because there is a doctrine of inspiration. In other words, the pure words of God are inspired or God breathed by the Holy Ghost. Holy man of God wrote, inspired by the Holy Ghost. But then there is, you know, the fact that God preserved the promise he would in Psalm 12, you can read in other parts, and he did. Otherwise, <clears throat> we wouldn't have <clears throat> the pure words of God preserved because there are more than 2,000, more than 2,000, you can search this on Google yourself, versions, which I call perversions, when in reality God knows how to speak, what to speak, and knows how to preserve his pure words, line by line, letter by letter, even the commas, see, everything is as God wanted, in the text of the King James Bible. So we don't need to go to Greek or Latin or commentaries. Read and ask the Holy Spirit of God, if you're a believer, to help you to understand. He will. Because God desires that we come to the full understanding, the full assurance of understanding the knowledge of our great God and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His desire to save mankind because the will of God in this dispensation of grace he will have all men to be saved <clears throat> and to come to the knowledge of the truth there are no restrictions given that we all sinners Romans 3 24 uh, 23 all have sinned and come short of the glory of God continues being justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus <clears throat> sorry so God desires, God wills everyone to be saved. Does it mean that everybody gets saved? No. Because there is one element. Every one of us has got a free will. We can free will to believe or in free will reject. Now the choice we make <coughs> is what determines our future. If you reject the gospel of Christ, let me tell you frankly, you have no way to be saved. Works-based, performance-based gospels are preached everywhere and they are false and they are another gospel and they put you under the curse. I want to encourage you, the best I can, to simply believe and receive this glorious gospel, the grace of God which is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture it's so powerful and simple your part is to believe receive the part of God to save you and he does he saves you and he seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise Ephesians 1 13 See, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. After you believe, see, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. So God saves you, God seals you, and God fills your spirit with His glorious spirit. He seals you. The Holy Spirit of God comes to dwell in you. It is mind-blowing, but that's the truth. Praise God. And this word sealed is present three times. Just to remind us that our God is a Godhead. So, continue to read. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is coming to you as it is in all the world. So, can you imagine 
this girl's gospel is not only coming to you Colossians but all the world that's why 2000 years later well I mean we are in the 2023 I don't know the calendar if it's correct but let's say 2000 years a sinner an ungodly sinner enemy of God in the flesh a child of wrath and disobedience in the flesh like me by hearing this gospel get saved and sealed by grace that's amazing which is coming to you as it is in all the world that brings forth fruit as it does also in you wow yeah the fruit is people so saved and saints edified because once you get saved and he does it it's the operation of God you don't get saved by any effort on your part it's the operation of God that the resurrection of Christ he seals you then you can read and study this book and that edifies you in the faith because whatever whatever is not a faith is sin but all of, written in the in the pure words of God is just glorious it's the spiritual food that you and I need to grow in grace not to grow to become super duper I don't know what just to be believers members of the body and give me, and bring glory to God because since today you heard of it the gospel of the grace of God and knew the grace of God in truth if I preach to you the gospel of the kingdom which is true is valid in that dispensation of the past and will be valid in the future that doesn't bring this uh, result why because God is not building the kingdom is is there Israel the Israel of God is not present on the on earth I know that this is shocking for you if you've been listening years after years uh, you know replacement theology there the, the church takes the place of Israel no God has a program for Israel that is God on old, so to say, since Israel is fallen in unbelief. Okay? But it's going to restore them. Romans 9, 10, 11 talks about that in the future, after that this program, the dispensation of grace, comes to an end. And this end doesn't come by your own or my efforts or any, our effort, the operation of God. God will do it. And after that, that we get caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That's called normally the rapture, but it's called the catching up. We get caught up to meet the Lord in the air. After that, the Lord will restart the prophetic program, which is an old. And we restore is believing Israel, the remnant. Not all Israel like an indiscriminate way, you know. Because not it's not the Jews, somebody just because he's born in, in, in the, the seed of Abraham. You need to be the believing one, you know. Anyway, every verse, I need to be careful, every verse can open a conversation never ending, but I need to bring to conclusion this study. As you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ? Epaphras evidently was from Colossae. Who also declared unto us, what? Your love in the Spirit. Your love in the Spirit is in the truth. It's not a, a sensation, an emotion, a feeling. He says, speaking the truth in love. Which kind of love? The love of Christ, the love, the love of the Spirit. But you need to speak the truth. You shouldn't by any means please go around deluding people with another gospel another Jesus another spirit which was for another dispensation and which will be in the future you need to preach Jesus according to the revelation of the mystery Romans 16 25 tells us we preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was hid in God that's why you can't find in Isaiah and Ezekiel, Jeremiah and the Psalms, in Deuteronomy. You know, I mean, all the word of God from Genesis to Revelation is pure words of God. And it's all true. But needs to be applied dispensationally according to the way God has been dispensing his will, his doctrine in every dispensation 
which cannot be mixed, otherwise it would be a tremendous poison concoction. If I tell, yes, Jesus saved you, but now you have to keep yourself safe, it sounds very pious, but it is the gospel of Satan. Because nobody is able to save himself or herself, and nobody would ever be able to keep yourself or herself saved. It's ridiculous. Christ is a perfect Savior. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He saves you, He seals you, He keeps you saved. He doesn't trust in you. <laughs> I remember religion, I heard God has trust, faith in you. No, He hasn't. He has faith in, in Himself, so to say, even though God doesn't need to have faith. He trusts His own Son. I mean, He's done everything through the below. I don't, I, I don't think I'm using the right words here. What happens when you believe and receive this gospel? You are accepted in the beloved. Who is the beloved? The Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the perfect man and the perfect God. Fully God, fully man. That's the only one. The new Adam, the man from heaven. You understand? Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Your love also declare to you your love and the spirit. You see what happens in every verse I could go on and on, but I need to control myself. Verse 9. For this cause we also. We is not the Pope talking, is Paul and Timotheus. It's not the plural, my status, you know, is holiness. There is no holiness. <laughs> the only the Lord is reverend in praises. People call themselves pastors, reverends, holy, holy, holy man, holy, holy father. That's blasphemous, okay? Just avoid that all cost. But doesn't matter. We go here. For those cause we also since the day we heard it. Do not cease to pray for you and to desire what? That you might be filled with the knowledge of His will, you see? You know, wisdom is spiritual understanding. You might be thick, like I can be thick, you know. But spiritual understanding is given by the Spirit of God when you read, study, and believe these pure words. The words of God, the words of affection in you, that believe them. You need to believe. At the moment, there is this uh, resurgence, how do you say in English, of universalism. Everybody is automatically saved because Jesus died on that cross and was better as again. Now, there's an element missing there. People need to hear the gospel. Receive it, believing it, receiving it by grace of faith. No works. If people don't believe, nothing happens. They stay lost. Or they might go through some religious experience, quote verses here and there, gather in places, sing, jump, leap, doesn't mean a thing. Okay, be intellectual, theologians, doesn't mean a thing. God that is not interested. God is not impressed with anything we say or do. He knows the thoughts of men, they are vanity. The thoughts of the Lord, the words of the Lord are pure words, you know? <laughs> God desired that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. What does He want? He wants to save you and seal you by grace through faith. He wants to save, He wants all men to be saved. He wills all men to be saved. But He's not going to force this salvation on people. We shouldn't force ourselves. I'm here as an ambassador for Christ. I'm not a pastor. I don't want to be one. I'm not some anointed prophet, super saint. Holier than thou. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sinner in the flesh, but I'm saved now, so I can call myself a saint. I can be with the Colossians, with the Philippians, with the Corinthians, with the Romans, with the Thessalonians, and so forth. So that the Lord desired that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will. You know, wisdom. The wisdom of God, of course. And spiritual understanding. That ye might, you see, it's talking like you might because it's not a legalistic requirement but it, it, it would be a consequence but you believe in this word of God walking after the spirit not after the flesh that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing now it's gonna take some time for me for you for us to learn that's why we read and study 
being fruitful in every good work. What is a good work here? Preaching the word of truth. That's what pleases God in this dispensation of God, of Christ, of grace, the grace of Jesus Christ. Remember, I'm Italian. My English is very broken, so please forgive me. <laughs> and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's wonderful. Increasing in the knowledge of God. If I said to you, I know the Lord, like I know everything from A to Z, from Alpha to Omega, uh, I'd be presumptuous, presumptuous and proud and boastful. No, no, no. I'm saved and sealed by grace. I'm learning. What I learned until now is so glorious, I don't have enough word to praise the Lord. But it's the beginning of this wonderful knowledge of Him. It will increase in the knowledge of God through the study of the Word of God. And personally, that's my persuasion. When we will be in glorified body in heavenly places with Christ and the rest of the body, imagine with Christ, with God, Almighty God, and his angels and everything in heavenly places, not New Jerusalem, we're not the body, we're not Israel. We will continue to know the Lord for eternity because God is eternal. His understanding is infinite. We're not dealing with the religion or with the religious personality. We're dealing with the Almighty God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, the possessor of heaven and earth. How glorious, how powerful, how immense. He is. He said, I am. To Moses. Jesus said seven times, I am. And then added, you know, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life and so forth. And he said to the Pharisees, they were really attacking him. Before Abraham was, I am. He didn't say I was. I am. He's the great I am. The Almighty. Praise God. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. How? Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Strengthen. That's spiritual strength, of course, it's not physical. According to his glorious power, the power of the gospel of Christ. The Eden Paul says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. Universalists, stop being heretics and confuse the people of God. Go back to the cross. Believe, receive, and preach the gospel of the cross, the power of God unto salvation, unto all patience. I need that. I'm very impatient kind of person. A long suffering with joyfulness. Patience, long suffering, because God is like this, you know. Oh, wow. Why we do this? I say, giving thanks unto the Father. You need this giving thanks. This is the will of God in this dispensation of grace. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That we give thanks. Considering who God is, what He has done, and what glorious future, which is a reality even now, is given to us by grace. But this by grace doesn't mean, well, you know, I close my eyes. Jesus Christ had to die. He shed His precious blood. We are in through the power of the blood. The, the blood of Christ, not the water of the baptistry or the prayer of the sinner or any other thing the people in the flesh think that they can have favor with God. That's ridiculous. This is my beloved son in whom I will please. Listen here to him. He said to Israel, he says to us too. Jesus, the glorious, holy, righteous son of God, the only begotten son, only begotten, not the only son like you have in the perverted Bible. He gave his life, he shed his blood to atone for us for us sinners in Israel and us. And guess what? We have received the atonement. Romans 5 says, even now, with no waiting, 
like Israel in the future to be to receive the forgiveness of sins. We receive it already. Praise God. And we are saved. We are sealed by grace through faith. No works. It's the work of God. It's the operation of God. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us, the believers, the body of Christ, meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So we partake or take part of the inheritance of the saints in light. We are heirs of God a joint heirs with Christ. Already, without you doing anything. You think you need to make an effort? You don't need to do anything but believe. Read, study, believe, preach, give glory to God. Boast in the Lord. Glory in the Lord. Not in the flesh, not in, your, uh, in yourself or look at me. Now, look at the glorious gospel of Christ. Listen to the teachings from heaven. Because the Apostle Paul said these are the words of Christ given to him by the reason glorified ascend the Christ so it's not referring to the red letters referring to what Christ revealed to him in 13 letters that's why people freak out what about the red letters glorious I cite them all the time but the majority of what Christ says that you can't do what example did you sell all your good goods and give money to the poor People say, well, you know, maybe if you want. No, no, he doesn't say if you want. You want to follow Jesus according to that letters? Sell all you have and give it to the poor. And then pick up your cross and follow him with your feet in the kingdom. But the kingdom is not coming now. It will come in the future. Jesus is not building the kingdom of, Je uh, of God on earth. Like, you know, Jesus being the king. He's not, what, is he sitting in the throne in Jerusalem? Is it the modern Israel saved and preaching the gospel of, of the kingdom to the old world? No, it's not. But it will be in the future. So please, we give thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Praise God. God is light. What is it done in verse 13? Who has delivered us? Notice the tense. Who has delivered us? It's done. It's a damn deal operation from the power of darkness. What is this power of darkness? Aren't you sure aware that we live in the present evil world and the Satan, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience? He is the God with a low case G of this present evil world. He set the course of this world. He controls the affairs of this life, of this world. It's a dark world. But guess what? The body of Christ is delivered already. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Yeah, we are in a special warfare. No problem. But we are delivered already. We didn't do it. I remember when I was in religion. Like this deliverance courses. And people come and pray for you to be delivered. No, that's not the way it goes. It's a done deal. Christ has already done it. You need to read, study, believe this word. Not my words. I'm just a man. I'm an ambassador. That's it. The glory goes to God. The words of God written here. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm still here. Yes. Yes. Your members are on this earth still. When the Lord saves your soul and seals your spirit with the Holy Spirit of promise, you know what? You still are in this flesh. You're still in this body. But spiritually, already translated, translated, not translation of language, but like uh, taken us into the kingdom, that's the heavenly kingdom of his dear son. Now, what's happened with dear son? In whom the dear son Dear son, dear son, in whom? In him. We have redemption. We who? The body of Christ. What does redemption mean? We've been brought back to God through his blood. Not, you know, people think, you want to be redeemed, come to church, confess your sins, repent, they say. Confess your sins. Uh, stop sinning. 
Okay, what about this? Come to church every single time the doors open. Come in, listen to the preaching, which normally is kingdom gospel, so that doesn't apply to you. But that's what they say. Get baptized in water and start hiding and stop, you know, whatever. Well, if it was so easy to stop sinning, why well, Christ had to die on that cross? Why did he shed his blood? No, my friend, no, don't listen to this people listen to the word of God no and don't listen to me I'm just reading in whom we have redemption through his blood what do you want to add to this the sinners pray no the word of Baptist no your confession of sins no in whom we, you have redemption we receive the redemption we have it you see it's very plain English in whom we have redemption we have present tense now Redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Same thing is written in Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 7, and here is Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. Double. In whom we are redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. But what does it mean? It means exactly that. <laughs> Redeemed through his blood nothing else don't add don't diminish stay with the word even the forgiveness of sins so all our sins past sins present sins future sins because as long we are on this earth we sin that's a not an encouragement but the reality all forgiven so it doesn't make any sense that i'll go to the lord, say, lord you know and confess my sin bam, 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 and say please forgive me it's like i don't read this i don't believe it it's like saying to God, I don't believe that Jesus did it all to forgive my sins. I need to add my confession, please. So you, do, you become a co-redeemer? Co -redeemer? No, you can't co-redeem yourself. It's the operation of God. Christ did it. It's the work of God. <laughs> your flesh doesn't like that. Religion doesn't like it. But your flesh, oh, impossible. It's too so easy. Easy? Jesus has to shed his blood. You know what I mean? Oh, that's cheap. Cheap? You want to call cheap the shedding of, of the, the blood of the Son of God, the only Son, the only begotten Son of God? Let me speak probably biblically. Huh? You want to call that cheap? Be careful. In whom we are redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The, the price tag is. <clears throat> the blood of Christ. Maybe you don't understand or you don't consider or you didn't think about it that the blood of Christ was the blood of God because Christ was born by the power of the Spirit. The Spirit of God conceived, the Holy Spirit conceived in the womb of the Virgin, fulfilling prophecies. Genesis 3, 15, Isaiah 7, 14. The Lord himself could give a sign. The virgin, not the Alma, not the young lady, the virgin shall conceive. And bear a son, will, you should call his name Emmanuel, which interpreted in the, the gospel, which means God with us. So the blood that was running through the veins of our Lord Jesus Christ, true man, he was a real man. He, had, he was in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he never sinned. He knew no sin. God made him to be sin for us, but he, he didn't become a sinner. Please understand this. Christ is God. He was God in the flesh, in the, in the days of his flesh, in the days recorded in the for gospel. But he's the eternal God. That's the incarnation, okay? Be careful. Don't misunderstand who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And please, if it's possible, refrain from all this imagery of this man, you know, with the beard, and long hair and blue eyes, brown eyes with the talit on the head. You've never seen his face. i never seen it. We don't know him according to the flesh. This is the traditions of religions. And they come from Babylon, I tell you. We know him according to the revelation of the image of, 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 of the scripture, the, the spirit. Because he said, with the image of the invisible God, you see? He is the image of the invisible God in the scriptures. You know him. Through the power of the Spirit that reveals in the Scripture, the image of Christ is the doctrine of Christ in the letters of Paul. 
not in these pictures that you see in religion. You don't need those. So they help me to pray. No, they don't. They continue to reiterate in a fleshly carnal image of Christ, which is absolutely diabolical. Let me tell you, okay? I don't want to say this to condemn you. I said, just refrain, throw them away. Just read this book. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. At this point, every sect, every cult, namely, I could say, you know, the Jehoitans, the Mormons. You see, it was a creature. Wait a second. Don't take the verse out of context because you continue to read. The firstborn of every creature, the first one to be risen from the dead, and every creature, that's a creature, the, the, the new creature, the body of Christ, for by him were all things created. He is God, he is the creator. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, that's the word of God speaking. God the Father, the Spirit moving, and God speaking, that's the word. That's Christ, the second person of the Godhead. The word, with a capital W, seven times appears in the King James Bible. Christ before incarnation. He spoke, he said, he spoke light, because he's light. He said, let there be light. The light was. For by him were all things created. So he is the first born of every creature, because he's the first one to be risen from the dead. For by him is the first fruits, you know, were all things created. Created, not big bang here, you know. Don't embrace pagan beliefs. The Big Bang, evolution. That's satanic to the core. That's why they created this space agency to make you believe something the Bible doesn't say. And to deny the very God who created everything and saved your soul. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and the earth. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Which things? Visible and invisible. Do you see angels? No. But they're real. They're invisible too. Say, but why invisible? I mean, your eyes could not bear the vision of them unless, as God did in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord or the angel that he sent shielded with the light protected the people you know that God had to send those angels to when nowadays people say ah, I've seen an angels forget it it's not true they're liars maybe they don't even know that they're lying but the majority do it's very you know I've seen an angel so I must be a very holy person stop this don't glorify the flesh and don't give credit to Satan for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. You will see God, he is a spirit. No. Do you see Jesus now? No, you don't. The Holy Ghost? No, you don't. I feel him. No, you don't. He's invisible. But he operates because he's God. I see a tree, yeah, I see the ocean, I see the mountains, I see heaven, the firmament, seven, 17 times the firmament. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? He created and made visible, invisible, whether that be thrones, why thrones, what is thrones? Yeah, if there are thrones, there are kings, dominions, dominus, huh? Or principalities, or powers, four levels, you know. In heavenly places, all things were created by Him. Is the Creator? You understand? And for Him, which, once you believe this gospel, gives a real meaning to your life on earth. Oh my! Praise the Lord Almighty God. 
So he created all things by him, by Christ. So God, the God that created all things by him and for him. So you saved, I'm saved, the body of Christ, we created for him. All of a sudden, the questions I had when I was a young man, growing with all the sins I was committing, knowing and unknowing, conscious and unconscious, I mean, unbelievable. Anyway, I was asking, who am I? Where do I come from? What's the meaning of this life? Of course, these question marks, they've been answered now. We walk by faith, not by sight. Faith in his words, not in sensation, emotions, feelings. They change all the time. But the word of God is unchangeable and is eternal. And this truth, once you let it penetrate in your spirit, gives you peace because you know now you're saved. Therefore, being justified by faith, through faith, we're peace. Through faith, we're peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So things we I want to quote properly. I need to go to Romans 5 because, you know, I'm an old man. Therefore, be justified by faith, you see? By faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes happens. That's why I tell you and I repeat. You don't need to believe me. You need to believe I'm just... Uh, an ambassador, as God says, we are ambassadors for Christ. So I read, you need to believe the pure words of God written in this book. 46 minutes. Hmm. I don't think I can do it all. Okay, wait a second. Okay, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether be thrones or dominions or principalities and powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. Of course, he's, he's God. <laughs> and by him all things consist. Oh, man, you know, praise the Lord. Almighty God, thank you, Father. I mean, this is amazing stuff. I'm looking, while I'm talking to you, you see the, the screen, you know, by, but I'm looking outside, you know, I look, I see the blue heaven, the waters above, and the clouds. And then I see the park, the trees, you know, the little birds flying around, the, the flowers. That's good. But there is more. And that's him. There's so much in him. Glorious, beautiful, pure. In his before all things. And by him all things consist, exist together. Con, cum, in Latin, with. Together. And he is the head of the body, the church. You see now, who is Christ? He is the head of the body, the church. The church doesn't mean... A building with towers and bells and altars. No, no, that's actually Judaism. Messianic Judaism re revisited replacement theology and so the church is a body of believers made of men and women, young and old, doesn't matter. We have to simply, simply believe they receive this gross gospel of the cross. And Christ is the head. We are members in particular, members one of another, flesh of his flesh, bones of his bone. Who is the beginning, you see? The beginning. I'm the, the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Didn't he say so in Revelation? He does. The firstborn from the dead. You see the, in, in which sense the firstborn? Resurrection. That in all things... In how many things? In all things. He might have the preeminence, which means... The position of number one, absolutely the head. In this body that God created as a figure for us to understand, the head has got the preeminence. Oh yes, the hands are important, they are, everything else is important. But without the head, for he pleased the Father, I love this, that in him, that Christ, should all fullness dwell. So when you, once you're in Christ, all fullness is there, you know. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. How did he make peace? Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the blood of his cross. How people make light of the blood of Christ? Religious people do. 
There are some big name. They do. MacArthur is one of them. I mean, his name. I don't hate this guy. But he's a Calvinist. He's preaching from the a doctrine which is from the very pits of hell. A working, a working performance based war, gospel that cannot save the, the chairs I'm sitting on. It's like these people they want to heal and they can't heal the, the zit on the nose. Let's stop pretending and just go with the word of God and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. Yes. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. There's been rebellion in heaven. There's been rebellion on earth. So the creation of God turns against the creator. But the creator has got a way to save. One is a mystery. The heavenly program is a mystery. He didn't go for ages and generations revealed to Paul. Another one is the prophetic program from the beginning revealed to his holy apostles and prophets. And they wrote it down. And we may peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether it be things in earth or in heaven. A new Colossians, new Roberto or whoever listened to this if you believe. There was some time <coughs> alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now as he reconciled. But you need to be a believer. Reconciliation and salvation and forgiveness of sins and all the spiritual blessings take place when you believe and receive the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ as the only way to be saved. And praise God for that. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, and grounded the cell. This is not a you lose salvation. It's to come to this point of understanding, grounded and settled. God wants us to be like a tree, you know, with the roots going grounded deep and wide in the in the word of God in Christ. And settled. Settled means you're not gonna be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and be not moved away. Because that's what Satan wants to do. Move you away. Move people away from the hope of the gospel. And say, ah, you're too much of a sinner. Ah, you know, you, you, com you committed the unpardonable sin. No, we cannot. In this dispensation of grace, no one can. And Paul, who did, was forgiven. Because in the dispensation of grace, all sins are forgiven. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. This, for me, is colossal. He didn't have internet, he didn't have microphones, he didn't have uh, special systems. Hmm. This gospel has been preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. This is not the gospel that Peter and James and John are preaching. They preach another gospel, the gospel of, of the circumcision to the circumcision, to Israel, the gospel of the kingdom. Paul is preaching the gospel of the uncircumcision to the uncircumcised Gentiles and also to those Jews who miss the gospel of the kingdom, but, but they can be saved with the gospel of grace. Minister means servant. Not like, you know, we see nowadays some people think, hey, I'm a minister, so everybody's got to serve me. No. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, the church, body, church, no building people, whereof I made a minister, servant, servant, according to the dispensation of God. Four times the word dispensation is present in the King James Bible. Omitted and changed and modified in the perverted Bibles. Whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given me to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Wow, I say. The word of God is fulfilled with the writings of Paul, not with the book of Revelation. He said, but the book of Revelation is last. Yes, because your Bible, the books are written dispensationally. Time passed, but now the letters of Paul in the middle. 
and that's just to come through Hebrews to Revelation. But the book of Revelation has been written immediately after the ascension of Christ. No, like they want to make you believe because they want to modify everything. The devil is very astute, deceptive, you know. Where often made him in this according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. So with the word of God is fulfilled, means you don't need a fresh word from the Lord, prophetic, you know, nowadays. Forget that. Forget that. You got it. Just get this King James Bible, believe it, read it, study it, believe it, and give glory to God. Give glory to God. We say by grace through faith. Even the mystery, which has been hey, sorry. All right. Even the mystery, which has been hid, hidden from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints, to the body of Christ. So this mystery was hidden in God, you understand? Not in the scriptures, and not in special revelation given to Frank or Philip or Mary, you know? Nowadays there are people that call themselves prophets, anointed. Don't listen to them. Listen to the writings of the Lord. Because they will deceive you. And you don't even realize that you deceive because when you deceive, you don't know you deceive because you deceive. Uh, yeah. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest with saints. To whom? To whom say the saints, God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Whom we preach, whom we, once again, Paul and Timotheus in this case. <clears throat> Warning, warning, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we might present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's the desire of God. <laughs> whereof unto, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. 57. You see what I mean? This is colossal. You know, I don't have the pretense. And I tell you now that I exhausted this. I can read this another 50 times and every time will speak to me, to my spirit, man, and teach me and admonish me and warn me. And every, every time will do to it because these are the eternal, pure words of God preserved, infallible for you, for us, for the body of Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this opportunity, this glorious grace that we can read and study your pure words, that we have been instructed from your apostle that you chose your chosen vessel that we save because Christ the glorious Christ the Lord of glory incarnated and he died for our sins on that cross of Calvary all of them and he was buried and there was again a third day to justify us as God, God you say through the apostle Paul in Romans 4 25 that Christ was delivered for our offenses was risen again for our justification. We give you glory. We cannot but give you glory and thank you and glorify you and pray that this preaching will help somebody to receive this glorious gospel and to trust in you and you alone because you are worthy to be trusted and, wor and worshipped in spirit and truth. Amen. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior, our great God, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, friends, for listening. I hope that this helps you. Sincerely, deeply, may the, you know, the grace of God work in your heart. Receive this gospel. Believe how the Christ died for your sins, all of them. He was buried and he rose again today to justify you and to guarantee you salvation in every place in eternity, even now, in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>